Meet Riley Robinson. Not only are we trying to start a whole new fort from scratch in a country where there hasn't really been any of this, but we are trying to do this during a pandemic. We're trying to get people from Kentucky and people from Missouri and Illinois and all of these places. Minnesota. Minnesota, yes. And Brittany Montgomery. I want to bring it here not only as a game just for fun, but to also create a whole cross-cultural aspect to it as well, because this is a very big international sport. With the idea of bringing a hugely popular international sport blind cricket to the United States, beginning with raising the awareness about the sport. It is less intense than like your goal ball type game. You know, you're not getting balls slammed in your face. I was reading about cricket and they say, you know, it's a it's a gentleman's game. And how it's played. It's a small, almost like a tennis size white ball that has ball bearings in, which allows blind and partially sighted people to hear the ball. It's a very hard plastic ball, and it sounds like an annoying baby's rattle. And that is what it sounds like. Two ambitious and enthusiastic young ladies with a dream of planting the seed for a new sport in the Midwestern United States that may soon grow to a national phenomenon. Even if, you know, we only get a few people from each state, we would practice on our own and then come together as a team, mm -hmm. as a full team, Midwest team. And more. Because if we could be recognized by the World Blind Cricket Council and be a member and then they have about 10 members now, 10 different countries. That will give people the opportunity to travel internationally. Like, how cool is that? All of it's about building this awareness for next year. Hopefully we can start off the season with a lot of interest and a lot of people wanting to come out and try playing blind cricket. Your Twitter feed again is blindcricketmw. And then the email, blind.cricketmw at gmail.com. So if you live in the Midwestern United States and have any interest, reach out to Brittany and Riley. And now let's join Jeff Thompson in the Blind Ability Studios and welcome our guests, Brittany Montgomery and Riley Robinson. Welcome to Blind Abilities. I'm Jeff Thompson. Today in the studio, we have two people who are bringing blind cricket to the United States. One is from Indiana, and that's Brittany Montgomery. The other is from Ohio. Oh, Ohio. <laughs> I was just trying to say Riley at the same time. <laughs> and one is from Ohio, and that's Riley Robinson. Brittany, how are you doing? Great. Thanks for asking. How are you? Good. And Riley? I'm doing good. Well, thanks for taking the time out of your day to come on to Blind Abilities to talk about this new sport. It's never been here before, and you guys are initiating a presence of blind cricket in the United States. Absolutely. And thanks for having us. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about the game and what got your interest in blind cricket. Well, I've traveled a lot to various countries, and I've seen how passionate blind people are about this sport. They talk about it. They play it in their backyards. I've often said that even children at the blind school will roll up pieces of paper and use shoes for the bats to play in their rooms. They are <laughs> extremely uh, passionate about it. And I actually got married back in 2018 to a Pakistani who is an international blind cricket player since 2008. Cricket, a common sight in Pakistan. But this is a game with a difference. All the players here are blind or partially sighted. So far there have been three blind World Cups and Pakistan have won two of them. And in this cricket mad country, playing the sport has helped these players integrate into society. Though there is still some way to go in a country where the disabled are sometimes marginalized. When he moved to the US at the end of 2019, you know, he kind of lost his passion because it's not here. And so the whole idea behind it was to bring that dream here to the U.S. so that he could, you know, play it and we could get other people involved who have missed that opportunity to play it here. One other really major thing is that my idea is I want to bring it here not only as a game just for fun, but to also create a whole cross-cultural aspect to it as well, because this is a very big international sport and you have several different countries playing around the world. And I just think that this would create a really good cross-cultural aspect to it and even create uh, travel opportunities for people which could create independence for blind individuals as well. Great. How about you, Riley? So for me, we kind of have to go back. So Brittany and I have been best friends since we were in early middle school, probably. I'm actually originally from Indiana, 
and moved to Ohio two years ago in June. So it's been a little over two years. Since moving to Ohio, I've gotten very involved in blind sports. And I used to be involved in blind sports quite a bit in high school and part of the swim team and track team. And then my senior year of high school, I actually played goalball and kind of realized how much I enjoyed team sports, that team aspect of playing a game where you're not just an individual trying to do things, you're actually communicating with a team. And so when I moved to Ohio, I reached out to the blind soccer team that's getting started here. I've been a part of the Columbus blind soccer team for a couple of years now. And when Brittany and Mujib, her husband, had this idea of starting a cricket team, I was all in. I mean, it was one of those things where pretty much any sport that I hear about, I'm down to play. And this is the same with hockey. I've tried blind hockey a couple of times. And so for me, it's very much that motivation of a love of blind sports and wanting to bring something new and different. And I already know because I'm already involved in blind sports here, I know of a lot of people who would be interested in trying something new and trying something different. It just really worked out. It was something we could definitely bring to the visually impaired community here as well. And so that's when we really kind of got together and thought, well, we could bring it to Indiana. We could bring it to Ohio and really work together on this. And that's kind of where my motivation started. Yeah, you're bringing it to the United States, but this isn't anything new. There's been five World Cups throughout the world. As you said, it's a huge international sport, the blind cricket. Absolutely. And so bringing it here just seems like a common sense thing to do. And with your interest in sports, I'm glad you're doing that. Can you give just a little bit of what cricket is about? Baseball's kind of spawned off of it. You know, you got a bat and you got a a bowler, like a pitcher. Yeah, I do want to preface this by saying we are the bringers of this. We're not necessarily the ones who really know how to play the game super well, because This is more of a passion project that we picked up, but at the same time, there are a few very experienced players in Indiana who have helped coach us and teach us parts of the game. So we're going to kind of give the best that we can on how to play the game because we're still learning as we go. A lot of people compare it to beatball. I mean, because it's somewhat similar, but it is very different. So you have your batter, and you have your bowler, the bowler will pitch the ball and you have a wicket or a stump next to you. If you're the batter, a little behind you a little bit too, little bit behind you. Yeah. You are trying to protect your wicket from the ball hitting your wicket as well as batting the ball. So you kind of have two jobs as a batter to protect your wicket and also bat the ball. And then as far as the bowler, the bowler's job is to get it to where you can bat it, but their main job is to try and hit that wicket. So each person kind of has two jobs. And then I'm going to (laughs) let Brittany kind of explain. Well, and then of course you have your fielders. In total, you have 11 people on a team. So Mm -hmm. the rest are in the field. And then when the ball is out in the field, you'll have someone who will catch the ball and have to run to the wicket and touch the ball on the wicket in order to get the runners, the people who are running to get them out. And you have to run back and forth. A run is basically going from one wicket or stump to the other wicket or stump. And you can do that multiple times just until one of the fielders is able to hit the wicket. And Uh that kind of, I believe. (laughs) Yeah. And and the other thing about this game is that it is played like underhanded. So you're not actually throwing the ball Ah. when you're batting. You're actually basically just squatting down when you're batting. So you're not actually standing and swinging the bat in the air and nor are you throwing the ball in the air. It doesn't beep. It has metal bearings in it. So as the ball is rolling, you can hear it. Cool. That's similar to like a blind hockey. It has bearings in the puck to make that sound when it moves. That's neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Blind soccer is very similar. It's not a beeping ball either. So There's a lot of times where you kind of lose the ball and have to go find it and things like that because it doesn't constantly beat. That is a bit of a difference too. I was going to say the other thing about that I think is really 
cool about blind cricket as far as the ball is concerned is I feel like you actually are categorized as being a good batter based on how great you are at listening for the ball. Because honestly, like if a ball is in the air and it's beeping, you can't really determine where it is. It's more of a timing strategy. That's another thing. Like when you hear the ball rolling, you know how close it is coming to you. So you know when to swing that bat as opposed to if a ball is beeping in the air, it's too difficult to judge where it It is. It comes down to the pitcher in a lot of cases. And that's why in beat ball, you have a pitcher from the same team because it comes down to the pitcher and the batter being able to work together to get the timing right to be able to hit the ball. Whereas in cricket, the bowler is not on your team. It really is up to the batter to listen for that ball, protect the wicket, make sure that the ball doesn't hit the wicket and you're able to bat it at the same time. And your bowler is not on your side. You mentioned that it's kind of like blind hockey in the sense that there are bearings in it. It's also the same as far as the categories. You have a B1, B2, and B3 categories in blind cricket, just like you do in blind hockey. Yeah. That's also really nice is that it's a team full of visually impaired people. There are no sighted people in blind cricket. I think it's great that you're giving people a chance to experience this game. I mean, it's new, basically, to the United States. You know, like you said, other people like sports. They like to play games. And so I think it's a good thing that you got people experiencing this actually coming together and trying to build this. How are you reaching out to people? When this initially got started, we actually created a meeting through Zoom on June 6th. And the way we did this was we picked out three international Yes, we had one from South Africa, one from England, and one from Pakistan, a woman player, actually. They came in and we picked out some representatives from RN that we felt that would be good to help us, you know, organize this or or to at least bring ideas to the table. Each international guest spoke about their involvement in cricket, uh, some of their greatest achievements, and why they would like to see it brought to other countries, particularly the United States. Welcome to NFB of Indiana. Today we are covering the topic of blind cricket. Of course, today is June 6, 2020. My name is Michael Loft. Today I'm just going to turn it over to our host who is working actively to start a blind cricket team in the United States. At this point, I will turn it over to Brittany Montgomery. All righty, guys. So thank you all for coming. I'm very excited about this. I just want to let you know that the meeting will be split up into about 10 minutes each for international guests and then another 15 minutes Q&A session. And then the last 15 minutes will be an opportunity to reflect on actionable steps that we could take to bring cricket here. You guys could be an integral part of something that could be really quite special. When this project takes off, you are all going to be trailblazers. And don't forget, this is actually happening during a pandemic. So, uh, yeah, thank you for having me. Let me talk to you about cricket. Now, cricket, there are a lot of rules. I'm not going to be able to cover all of them, but I'm going to go through some of the basics of blind cricket. So blind cricket comprises of a team of 11 players. You have minimum of four B1s. These are players who are totally blind and wear blacked out shades. You then have four B2s. Now these are partially blind players who can see up to five degrees. Then you have your partially sighted players who are B3s and can see less than 20 degrees in the better eye. The major difference with this game is is obviously the ball. It's a small, almost like a tennis size white ball that has ball bearings in which allows blind and partially sighted people to hear the ball. It's a very hard plastic ball and it sounds like an annoying baby's rattle but I welcome the sound right now. And that is what it sounds like. The game actually follows the MCC rules, so a lot of the rules are similar. Uh, However, where the game differs is for some of the categories. So a B1 player is obviously totally blind. However, our runs, everything we score is doubled. We can actually take a catch on one bounce. The ball has to bounce twice before it reaches the batsman or batswoman. The other thing that you do in blind cricket is how does a batsman know you're about to bowl? So you say, ready batsman. And then as you release the ball, you say, play. There are several ways of getting out in blind cricket and they follow the mainstream game. One of the most challenging things about bringing it here is creating awareness. That is the most challenging part because you think about other countries, bringing blind cricket to some of these other countries, let's say Pakistan, for example, it was pretty easy in the sense that it was already a very, very, very popular sport in the sighted aspect. People were already familiar with cricket as a game. Here, Sometimes people don't even know what cricket is at all. Yeah, they'll say, well, what is that? I don't even know what this is. And, you know, sometimes people just have no idea, no clue. We've just had to approach it in a way as 
well, what does it really matter what it is? I mean, we'll, we'll teach you what it is. It's a new game to play, you know? And it's also hard to get, you know, it's hard to get people to, some people are kind of like, well, I don't know. I don't know what that is. I don't, I don't, I don't really want to sound boring. Sounds like yeah, golf. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like you're trying to explain it. It's, you just have to play it, you know? It's, it's trying to like explain an entire book without giving it away. I mean, just read it. There you go. Or get out and play it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We actually uh, hosted a demonstration day back in uh, July 26th here in Indianapolis at the Indy World Sports Park. Some of the members from Ohio came down and that was a lot of fun. That was really, really fun. We got a lot of videos and audio and interviewed people after they would do it. We gave them a chance to bat and bowl and fielding. And that was a very good time. And we were definitely able to generate some interest and Pretty much everyone who came to that event said it was very enjoyable. They really had a good time. They would be interested in continuing to play. We were also, well, planning everything right in the middle of this whole COVID thing. And that has been a struggle in and of itself because when you're planning in the middle of a pandemic, you have to make sure everything is safe and everything is up to par in terms of safety and making sure everything's good there and hoping that people are still going to show up and letting them know that, yes, this is going to be socially distanced. It's going to be safe. We have precautions in place. That was, you know, another hurdle that we really had to overcome with trying to get this off the ground. So not only are we trying to start a whole new sport from scratch in a country where there hasn't really been any of this, but we were trying to do this during a pandemic. <laughs> yeah, just, we're yeah. trying to, to gather up people from like from the blind schools or from, you know, rehabilitation centers and they won't allow you into the building at the moment or their, right. that, you know, their guidelines are very strict or their client, you know, capacity is very like maybe 50%. Low. So it's yeah. just, that's that's been really challenging. I mean, just mm-hmm. trying to get people interested and get them out there. So at this point, I mean, our best approach is just to set up Zoom meetings and to just create that awareness, do interviews whenever we have the opportunity to create a YouTube channel, which we're working on with different interviews on that and the different videos that we had from the demonstration event. Just hope that, you know, in 2021, which March would be a good time to start the new season, hope that that is more successful in that regard. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm glad that you guys came on here, you know, because on Blind Abilities, we can get it out to our listeners to help build that awareness that you're going to need. How can they get a hold of you? There are two main ways. So we do have a Twitter that's Blind Cricket. I had to think about it for a second. Blind Cricket MW for Midwest with the at symbol, of course. And then Brittany just mentioned this, you know, if people are really curious about how the game is played and all of these types of things or any questions that they might have, you can email blind.cricketmw at gmail.com. And that's our main email address. Those are the two main ways. And then we're trying to plan Zoom meetings and things like this that we will start getting out to people as well to continue trying to foster this interest and awareness going into the 2021 season. And we do have a few Zoom meetings that have already been recorded previously where like that one I told you on June 6th with the international guests so if anybody's interested in getting information about these international guests they're also very open in getting in contact as well and they'll take any you know, questions that anyone has. And we can provide these links as well. And they did provide their contact information in these interviews. Mm So if anyone reaches Mm -hmm. out to us, we can also provide that information to them as well. Well, it's great that you two have shown such a great interest in the blind cricket. And it's going to be a heck of a challenge to get something started, especially with the pandemic going. But you guys are going forward with it, building awareness. I applaud what your efforts are doing. And I'm glad to be part of helping to build the awareness about blind cricket here in the United States. So good job to both of you. Thank you so much. We really do appreciate it. Really do. Yeah. And also just want to, you know, really put emphasis on the fact that the international community that we have been in contact with have been extremely helpful and just very supportive and motivating. You know, I would like to just thank them again very, very much as that equipment that we got. They've got brand new equipment that was actually sponsored by uh, the Pakistan Blind Cricket Council. And um, they actually arrived about 10 days before our demonstration event, which we were concerned about. It was a challenge for them trying to get that shipped from Pakistan here to the U.S. because uh, they had a lot of things that were, you know, shut down and blocked and stuff also because of the pandemic. So that was super exciting, super exciting. I just want to kind of also say 
Thank you to our international people. We've just had so much, even on our Twitter, just everybody has been constantly sharing what we have to say. And we have so many people who've reached out from England, from South Africa, from Pakistan, from just all over the place, India. You know, we've had people say, you know, if you need help with anything, if you need anything at all, we're here. And there's just been nothing but support for what we're trying to do from those who already play the game and want to see it grow. So one of the challenges is that you cannot get the balls here. Maybe in the future, you know, we'll be able to figure that out. I need you to describe something, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The bat is not like an American baseball bat. No. Not at all. (laughs) It's more like a like a paddle. Yeah, yeah, that's it's how I flat. It. <laughs> it's flat on one side and kind of rounded. It's like a half cylinder almost, and you can just lay it down flat on the ground. And they're not the bats that we got. They're not light bats. They're, you know, you'd think it would be a lighter bat than what it is for hitting such a small light ball, you know. But it's definitely not. It can really smack that ball because <laughs> it's not a light <laughs> bat at all. Very interesting. Well, that's great. So if anybody's out there and wants to smack that little ball (laughs) around, give them a call. (laughs) And bowling. Bowling is really fun. If you're a good bowler in general, just a good bowler, like on a bowling alley, you'd be a good bowler in cricket because that's pretty much how you throw your ball. Yeah. You're you're literally bowling it. So if you want to go do some bowling. (laughs) That actually sounds a lot better to me because when someone says, hey, let me toss this to you, I flinch. Mm -hmm. Like, no, no, don't, don't toss. I don't like tossing. Bowling, that's all right. Yeah. And it's it's not like a goal ball either. I mean, you're not really, I think that's part of the charm of cricket. It is an intense game and I don't want to discount that. It's very strategic. It's dynamic. It has a lot going for it, but it's also, it is less intense than like your goal ball type game. You know, you're not getting balls slammed in your face or, you know, something like this. It's, I was reading about cricket and they say, you know, it's a, it's a gentleman's game. I mean, that's kind of, (laughs) you know, so if you're kind of looking for something a little less intense, but is still like very competitive, blind cricket's the way to go. I like that. It's a gentleman's game. Yes. <laughs> so the patrons attending can be sipping their champagne and their hors d'oeuvres watching the game. You can go out in your khakis and your golf shirt and be, you know, good to go. And <laughs> Yeah. So the equipment, actually, for a person that play, it's very inexpensive. I mean, there's a bat and the wicket. They call Wickets them bales. or stumps. Stumps. Mm-hmm. So they got the, the stumps and, and, and that's the balls. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, for someone interested in it and they have a team, they can just join in and just use the bat and the equipment there right now (laughs) we're kind of trading equipment because as Brittany said the pakistan blind cricket council gave us equipment and i mean it's it's a good amount of equipment for both teams if indiana wanted to start a a little part of the team and ohio wanted to start a part of the team because that's what we're trying to do is even if you know we only get a few people from each state, we would practice on our own and then come together as a team, Mm -hmm. as a full team, Midwest team. And that's why we're trying to get people from Kentucky and people from, you know, Missouri and Illinois and all of these places. Minnesota, Minnesota, Minnesota. Yes. Is still considered Midwest. So all you Minnesota listeners out there. If they know what the hot dish is, they they can join. (laughs) Yes. Very true. (laughs) Another thing I want to mention Jeff, that's so exciting is that we were worried that we weren't going to be able to get our equipment in time for the demonstration day, but we are so determined to do this that we actually found a way to uh, get stumps made, the wickets made here. So we got all the dimensions. Then I actually uh, got in contact with somebody who owned a welding shop and they actually made the stumps for us. Oh, wow. They're not painted yet. We would have to paint them because the stumps from Pakistan actually, you know, like I said, came in time. But that was really fun. That was a fun project. I was just, I just want to see if we can do it. Like, let's just do it. Why not? Let's and, just try. I mean, yeah. And, and, and it worked. I mean, they're proper and everything. I mean, the only thing about these, the ones that we got made is they were meant to be stuck into the ground as opposed to the ones that we got from Pakistan. They, they actually just sit on the ground like flat. Oh, but wow. we could fix that. I mean, we could always just modify that a bit and have them in this on the same way. That wouldn't be difficult creating a base for it. And then also, my husband and I were just like, let's go to the store and see if we can make our own ball. So we just <laughs> actually found, I don't, we thought it was a ball. It was like some 
plastic toy thing and you, we opened it, opened eight different ways. This thing was weird. I don't even know what was inside of them. But anyways, we took them, whatever was inside of it out. Then we got some BBs, metal BBs, and put them in there and went ahead and sealed it all back together. And I mean, that thing actually worked. Like we hit it multiple times. It never broke. We still have it. Oh, wow. Improv just, cricket ball. Yeah, and I mean, we actually were going to use it on the demonstration day if our equipment didn't come on time. I mean, that was the best we could do. I mean, it wasn't 100% accurate, of course. I mean, but you could hear it. It sounded great. Mm -hmm. It rolled it. I mean, and you could hit it really hard and it did not break. So that was, it was so fun. It was so fun doing that just to see if we could do it. Why not? A little bit of determination and perseverance and look what you guys are doing already. Mm -hmm. Good luck. And for any Ohio listeners out there, Columbus, Cincinnati, if you want to drive there, we are planning a small demonstration day in November, but it will be indoors because weather gets pretty nasty around November. That is another thing we're planning to do just to do a small demonstration here in Ohio because we haven't done one yet. A chance to kind of bat and bowl and do a little bit of fielding inside. It won't be the same, but basically to say, you know, this is what it is and hopefully you'll be excited to start our outdoor season in March. So that's great because, you know, someone can actually come on there and get their feet wet, get, you know, get a taste of it, see what it's like and, you know, hopefully get an interest and, you know, like you said, building the awareness of blind cricket. Yep. All of it's about building this awareness for next year. Hopefully we can start off the season with a lot of interest and a lot of people wanting to come out and try playing blind cricket. Because if we could be recognized by the World Blind Cricket Council and be a member of them. They have about 10 members now, 10 different countries. That will give people the opportunity to travel internationally. Like, how cool is that? Like, I don't know. I mean, I'm crazy about international travel and just other cultures, and it's like a passion of mine, so I'm, like, super excited. But I know a lot of people would be really motivated by that. Exactly. I mean, what, what's the – I mean, how cool would it be to get a team together – and, you know, in 2022 or 2023, we go and travel to another country and do competitions in other countries. I mean, who knows? USA. USA. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that would be so fun. It's just like just thinking about it. I mean, it's just I want to do it now. Like, let's just go. Come on. Come on, people. There you go. Let's get this started. <laughs> well, Brittany, Riley, thank you so much for coming on the Blind Abilities and sharing this with us. And we're going to put some links in the show notes here. People, if you're interested in it, get a hold of them. And your Twitter feed again is Blind Cricket MW at yes. mm -hmm. with the at sign. Well, they all have the at sign. I just throw that yeah. in there because <laughs> some people don't know Twitter too well, but most people do at this point. But yeah, it's Blind Cricket MW, all one thing there we go and then the email blind.cricketmw at gmail.com all right thank you very much for coming on and you guys have a great day and hopefully we'll see you on the field we'll get a minnesota team here i don't know why we got a lot of, <laughs> we got a lot of beat ballers here i mean what what else do okay. they have to do sometimes you know exactly right? and it's somewhat similar to beat ball if people like beat ball they'll probably like cricket like you said they like the challenge I think that's yeah. what keeps them going. I think so, too. All right. Thanks for having us. You bet. Thank you so much, Jeff. We'd like to thank Brittany and Riley for joining Jeff in the Blind Abilities Studios and sharing their passion for bringing blind cricket to the United States. Be sure to reach out to them on Twitter or by email. And for more podcasts with a blindness perspective, be sure to check us out on the web at www.blindabilities.com. And from all of us here at Blind Abilities, through these challenging times, to you, your family, and friends, stay well, stay informed, and stay strong. Thank you so much for listening. And have a great day. When we share what we see through, through each, each other's, other's, each other's eyes, eyes, we can then, we can then begin, begin to bridge, bridge the gap, gap between, between the limited, limited expectations and the, and the realities of blind abilities. The realities of blind abilities. Of blind abilities. For more podcasts with a blindness perspective, check us out on the web at www.blindabilities.com, on Twitter at Blind Abilities, download our app from the App Store, Blind Abilities, that's two words, or send us an email at info at blindabilities.com. Thanks for listening.